Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Thanks so much for stopping by. Now today I'm doing part one of the 10 cards one kit using the uh, My Monthly Hero May 2018 card kit. I didn't do an unboxing, but I did want to show you what comes in the kit. You get this beautiful six by eight stamp set and then a lot of nice silhouettes and then a beautiful tree on there. And then on the back side of your stamp set, they give you an example on how to create that beautiful tree. So keep that. Um, if you did get the kit, um, it's very handy. You get five pieces of hot pressed watercolor cardstock. They're four and a half inches by seven. And then you get a roll of washi tape. This one has real pretty leaves on it with some purple flowers. It's so pretty. And I do believe this washi tape will vary. So the one I show you here might not be the same one that you get. You get a beautiful stencil. This is called the tree swirl. And then you also get five skeleton leaves beautiful, very organic leaves. And then you get your dies. Now you get 13 coordinating dies that go with the stamp set. And then you also get two leaf dies and then you get your um, fancy die and also the frame that will cut that out. But let's jump in with card number one. Now for this card, I'm gonna use the stitched rectangle die and cut out a panel of the hot pressed watercolor card stock. Now, I did have to use my scissors. It didn't run through my die cut machine. This is a 140 pound um, hot press watercolor cardstock, so it's pretty thick stuff. But um, I wanted to use the stencil, but I didn't want to use it as the tree. I just wanted the swirls on it. So I'm gonna tape it down to my glass mat, just on that one corner. I gotta make sure it's taped really good. I didn't want to shift. And then I'm gonna um, color it in with my Distress Oxide ink. This is Antique Linen. It's a real soft tan color. And very gently, there's my buddy. She came by to say hello. But I'm gonna go around um, my stencil with my antique linen. Now once I have that done, um, from my stash I have some Ranger Perfect Pearls Mist. This is the Perfect Pearl color. And I'm gonna go over my stencil with this. Um, this is going to create a real nice shiny effect. Now if you don't have perfect pearls, another alternative would be a shimmer spritz. It would do the same effect. But it's just going to add a little bit of shimmer to um, the distressed area that I created. Really pretty and soft. I'm just going to use my heat gun and dry it. And you can see it's real subtle, but it turned out so pretty. Okay, now that I have my background done, I want to use the washi tape. I'm going to add a strip to the very bottom portion of my panel and then I'm going to leave about a quarter inch gap and then add another strip. Now I'm just going to wrap the ends around the back side. Lovely. I think that looks very soft. Now um, I'm going to grab my stamp, pla my stamp platform here and stamp my sentiment. My sentiment is going to say it's the little things that count. It's such a pretty sentiment. Now I'm also going to grab two of the smallest leaf flourishes that are in the stamp set. Now these I think are meant to be the tree toppers, but I'm going to use them as a little embellishment. Now I'm going to pick those up and then, actually I could have waited to add my little leaf flourishes. Um, I'm just only inking up my sentiment with VersaFine ink. And then I'm just, I'm cleaning off the leaves. So you could... I should have just stamped my sentiment first. But once we have that done, I'm gonna go in with some green ink. This is a Hero Hue, it's called Field Greens. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stamp my little leaf flourishes. I picked the green that was pretty close to the washi tape. Okay, now the stamp set actually came wrapped around, um, some ribbon came wrapped around it, real pretty green. So I'm gonna take that ribbon and we're gonna put it to good use. Um, I'm going to wrap it around the center of my washi tapes and then tie a little bow to the left. I'm just covering up that, that quarter inch gap that I had created. And then I'll just trim off the tails. Lovely. Okay. I think that looks so pretty. Now, in the washi tape, there's some purple flowers. So I'm grabbing a Copic marker. This is V22. It's a real soft purple. And I'm going to add my own little flowers to my leaf flourishes. Kind of emulating the washi tape a little bit. 
but it just wasn't dark enough. So I'm going to go in with my V28 and add a little bit more purple. And I think this creates a real soft effect. I think it just turns out really elegant. But it, it um, ties that purple and the washi tape to my sentiment. And I got ink on my panel, so I'm just taking my sand eraser and taking it off. Okay, I think that looks fantastic. Now we're going to just flip this over and add some foam tape behind here. And then this is going to go on my white card base. My card base today is a four and a quarter by five and a half inch. It's a side folding card base. But that finishes off my first project, card number one. Now we're going to move along to card number two. What was ever left over of my hot press watercolor cardstock, I'm going to use that. So I just placed that in my stamping platform. And then I'm going to grab one of the branches here. That's going to go towards the very top. And then I'm also going to take the grass border that's in the stamp set, and that's going to go on the very bottom of this panel. I'm sorry I'm out of view. Um, I didn't notice it until it was too late. But I'm going to ink up both the grassy area and my tree branch with my VersaFine ink. And then I decided to add, I wanted my tree branch to, to be drooping a little bit, so I'm adding another one. And then while I was at it, I'm going to grab the sentiment. Now the sentiment for this card, I chose swinging by to say hello. And again, we're just I'm just inking it up with my VersaFine ink. We're going to be doing some heat embossing with some clear embossing powder. Now, as I got ready to do that, you'll see on the very bottom portion of my grass area, you can see the hot press watercolor cardstock. So I'm going to grab my VersaFine ink and just using my ink pad, I'm going to just go around that very bottom portion. I wanted it to be solid on the bottom. Now I'm going over the very top of it with some Nouveau Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. And then using my heat gun, I'm just going to melt that. Lovely. Okay, now I'm going to take a piece of white cardstock and I wanted a little gal that was hanging on the swing. So I picked one of the images and I'm just going to stamp her with my VersaFine ink again. And as I stamped her, if you look at her knee, I think my stamp has a um, a defect, I guess. She has, she has a little donut on her knee. But it's, it doesn't bother me because it's since it is a silhouette, it's so easy to fix. But I'm going to go over my image with my Nouveau Crystal Clear Embossing Powder. And then I'm just going to go ahead and melt that. Now this image is one of the images that came with a coordinating die. So I'm going to take that. Well, actually, I'm going to take my a black marker and just go over her knee. It was a quick and easy fix. But I'll take her, the die and just cut her out. Okay, she's all ready to go, but I wanted to color the background. My card today, I wanted to create a monochromatic card. And so I'm taking some faded jeans and also some shaded lilac. These are Distress Oxide inks. I'm adding some water with my spray bottle and I'm going to do a little bit of smushing. I've said this before, I'm not very good at smushing, but I guess the more you do it, the better you get, right? But the nice thing about this hot press watercolor cardstock is it creates a beautiful background. This is the first time I've ever worked with it and I really like it. Now I wanted to, I did dry it with my, my heat gun just to speed up um, the process here. But I took a circle die and I cut out a circle, kind of like a window on that panel. I'm going to pop that panel up with some foam tape. And then I have a navy blue um, card base. I'm going to place my panel um, towards the top of my my card base here. So it's going to have a um, an outline on the sides and the bottom. Lovely. Okay, now I'm going to take my little gal. Um, I'm going to trim off the white portion of the die cut area. I'm going to just add a piece of foam tape to my little gal and then I'll use my glue on the ropes of the swing to attach her. I wanted her to be sitting right inside of my window something a little bit different and I thought it just turned out so fun. Lovely. Now for bells and whistles, add a little bit of shimmer. I went in with some clear sequins 
it's just around the tree and around my sentiment and that finishes off card number two it's my two-tone card <laughs> okay now we're going to move along to card number three I'm taking another piece of the hot press watercolor card stock and I'm going to just trim it in half I'm going to use this panel here now we're going to do some stamping so I'm going to grab my oh no not for this card okay I wanted to use the skeleton leaves they were so they're so organic and so pretty I thought we're going to create a card with it uh, the cardstock that I'm using to create um, a frame with my stitched square dies is um, Nina Desert Storm I just cut out a thin square frame I wanted to keep this card kind of earthy and organic next I'm going to take a piece of acetate and I'm just going to cut, I'm going to cut out two squares the same size as my frame. So I'm just going to use my frame as a reference and then cut out two of them. Now I wanted to create kind of like a, a window box effect. So um, what I plan on doing is taking my skeleton leaves and sandwiching them between the two pieces of acetate. Now actually if you don't have any acetate you could use the bag that they came in just sandwich the two pieces of plastic together it would create the same effect now I'm gonna glue them together with my Nuvo Deluxe Adhesive and the glue smushed but no worries because it did end up drying clear so that's a good thing so I'm gonna set that aside let that dry just a bit and we're gonna work on our sentiment so using my frame as a guide that way I'm just gonna place it on my panel and that way I know where to stamp my sentiment. I chose the sentiment that says thinking of you. I'm stamping it again with VersaFine ink. Lovely. Now I'm taking some real thin foam tape. Um, this is actually leftovers from a previous kit but it's it's nice and thin and it went around my frame beautifully. Now since I am a not very patient person <laughs> well actually I'm a pretty patient person but not when it comes to card making I went ahead I didn't wait for it to dry but I went ahead and attached my little frame to my skeleton leaves and then there was a little bit of um, acetate overhanging so I'm just trimming it down with my scissors but I think that looks so fun and you can see the glue behind it but um, it did dry clear so there's no worries there now I just thought that looked a little bit boring so I decided to grab some watercolor this is um, um, Daniel Smith watercolor it's the only one I own It's my only investment with it but it's the most beautiful color it's called duochrome oceanic and it's got a real pretty blue but it, but it also has a gold tint to it and it's shimmery and it's just so pretty I thought that would create a nice little background for my little window box there. <laughs> um, using the leftover I added a little bit of water and I'm doing some splattering. And then I, I'm going to take some Distress Oxide ink, just a little bit of the vintage photo. I'm going to add some water and I'm going to do a little bit of splattering with that too. Just to tie in the craft card stock. And I'm kind of missing my little middle area that's going to go right behind my leaves there but using my heat gun I'm gonna dry it but I hope you can see the gold in that watercolor it's just my favorite okay so I dried my panel now I'm gonna add a little bit more dimension to my window box um, before I add my window box though I do want to adhere this to my card base my card base is a top folding a2 size card base and before I put it down I thought you know what I'm going to distress the edges since this this is so thick um, you don't even probably need, need to add any dimension to it it's it's so thick but I wanted to enhance the organicness of this card I guess so I'm just using my scissors to distress the edges just a little bit now I'm going to just tape it right in the center my cardstock for my card base is the same Nina Desert Storm that I used to cut out my frame okay now here's where I go in with some more foam tape I'm gonna add it to the back and 
and I don't think the camera's doing it any, very much justice. In fact, at the um, at the end here, I showed two pictures of the way this looks. I'm trying to capture the colors, but it just really turned out so pretty, and that gold just really made it stand out. But that finishes off that card. Here's a real nice close up, and then there's the, the finished card. But we're going to move along to card number four. Now I'm trimming down a piece of the hot press cardstock again. And now we're going to do some stamping. I'm going to place it in my mini misty. And I'm going to stamp the tree branch, the tree trunk. I'm going to ink it up with a cup of joe ink. It's a hero hue. I'm going to stamp it a few times to get a crisp image. Now, I think this image had a defect too <laughs> because I stamped it like five times and I still had that line on my tree trunk. So, but that's okay. That's, I wasn't too concerned about it. Tree trunks are meant to be textured. So I'm just adding a little texture, <laughs> but, um, using the backside of the stamp, um, cardstock, I am using it as a guide on how to arrange my little tree and it worked out lovely. I'm glad they have that there for you, but I'm going to attach my branches and then I'm going to ink it up again with a cup of joe. Now I'm, my goal was to mainly stamp the branches on the, Im the stamp images um, because I'm going to end up later on going in with some green ink and when I did that, the colors, you really couldn't tell. So if you wanted to go all brown, I think the same effect would be the, the same. I think the very tips of the leaves, you could see green, but um, it wasn't exactly as I intended, but I think it just still turned out pretty. So I went with it. <laughs> now here's where I'm going in with the field greens. It's a hero hue and I'm going around the, the tips of all the leaves. And, and the colors just blended too much together, I guess. <laughs> okay, once we have our, our branches all done, we're going to stamp our sentiment. The sentiment for this card I chose, it's so pretty. It says, thank you for the beautiful moments. Now I'm going to ink it up with the same hero hue that I used for my tree. It's the Cup of Joe. I'm just going to stamp it in the upper right corner here. I stamped it a few times just to get a real intense brown color. Okay. Lovely. Now in the stamp set, there is a little itty bitty apple and there's a little itty bitty pear. Well, I wanted to give this back panel a little bit of color. So I took the little pear and then I'm going to go over the top of it with um, two hero hues. One's called Butter Bar and then the darker color is um, I believe Pumpkin Pie. That one actually came from a previous kit. But I'm just creating a two-tone pair and I'm going to stamp them along the tree branches. And I think those two colors just look so so earthy. <laughs> so I just stamped my pairs and I think that looks great. Now to add a little bit more color, I'm going to go in with some yellow and white Baker's Trine. I want to tie it three times around the base of my panel and then I'll tie a bow right at the tree trunk. And then I'm just going to trim, uh, trim off the tails of my Baker's Twine there. Lovely. I'm going to straighten, out, straighten it out a little bit. Now I'm going to flip this panel over and I am going to add foam tape behind it. And then in my stash, I have a yellow card base. I'm going to just place this right in the center. Now for bells and I think it coordinated with the pairs really pretty. Bells and whistles, I'm going to go in with some Nouveau Jewel Drops. These are Limoncello. They'll dry translucent or clear. So with a little bit of a color, a little hint of color. So I'm adding a few dots. I did fill in my pairs and then I'm adding a few dots here and there. But that finishes off card number four. Okay, now for my final card today, we're going to do a little ink blending. I have some squeezed lemonade. This is a Distress Oxide ink. 
and I'm going over a piece of um, Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock, and then I'm going to top that off with some spiced marmalade, just making sure they blend together. And then for my last color, I decided to go in with some picked raspberry. I think the color combinations of these three inks are so pretty. I'm going to go take my blending tool that I used for my squeeze marmalade and blend those that middle colors together. So there's not a real harsh seam. But I think those three colors are just so pretty. Okay, now I'm going to add some water using my spray bottle here. Now the longer you leave the water on, the more um, the more it will oxidize, but I just wanted a very subtle um, background, so I wiped it off pretty quick. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Next, I want stitching around my white panel here, and so I put my rectangle die down, and then I wanted to use this beautiful die. I'm going to place it in the center and die cut that out, and this just creates the most prettiest element for your cards. That's going to go on the very top portion of my my colored background there. I am going to pop up this panel. I'm going to leave it white, but I'm going to pop it up with some foam squares. And then I'm going to place that back on um, my colored panel. And I'm just going to trim off any excess that's overhanging. I think those colors look, look so nice with white. <laughs> Okay, for my sentiment, I have a piece of black cardstock here. I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool and go over the top of that. And then using my Versamark ink, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. My sentiment for this card says swinging by to say hello. I'm going to, this is new actually, um, I want to try it. This is Nuvo's um, Fine Detail Glacier White Embossing Powder. So, not that I need more white embossing powder. Um, I just thought I'd give it a try, and so far it worked really great. I just melted it, and then I just blocked off my sentiment, and I did add a piece of foam tape behind it and secured it to my panel. Now for bells and whistles, I'm going to go in with some clear droplets. These are from Pretty Pink Posh. I have two different sizes, and I'm going to add just a few here and there. And I think that looks very simple, but just very, very pretty. That fancy die is just gorgeous. But here's a close up. Okay, now here's a here's a quick look at all of, well the part one, the first five cards that I'm making using the My Monthly Hero May kit. Um, I hope this gives you some ideas and inspiration. Um, I just want to try try out something different for you guys. Let me know what you think by leaving me a comment. I love to hear them. And I appreciate all your comments. You guys are so wonderful. And I really appreciate your, all your lovely comments. They, are, they inspire me. Have a fantastic day, guys. And um, we'll see you soon for part two. Bye-bye.